N may die. I'm sorry. Wait, let's do that one. <laughs> sorry, I think it's funny. I feel silly. I feel silly about this story. I feel so silly reading this story. You guys have made me look silly. All right, all done, all done, all done. I'll be serious, all done. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on where you are on the globe, I make an applaud. Bringing to you fur by the minute, the fluff, the raw, and sometimes the wrath in this week's fur. Royal regifting all the Queen's bees, the ultimate identification, and some quirky pets. First up, two of Queen Elizabeth's four precious pups have found their new home. But this one is familiar. Corgi Sandy and Newick will live with the Duke and Duchess of York. Reps for Prince Andrew and his former wife Sarah Ferguson said the furry siblings will move to the ex's home at the Royal Lodge on the Windsor Estate. They gifted the dogs to the Queen in 2021. Last week, we reported on who may take Queen's full fur babies. There is Chatter Doggy Candy will join Sandy and Newick, while Cocker Spaniel Lissy may live with Star. Well, I'd like to understand that part. So the Cocker Spaniel Lissy has to live with staff, but the doggy candy will be with Sandy Newick. Next up, another species is buzzing about the Queen's passing. This one is a bit peculiar. A tradition going back hundreds of years has been ceremoniously observing significant deaths. Mail Online reported official palace beekeeper John Chapel travelled to Buckingham Palace and Clarence House to let the royal insects know their leader has died and they should be good to their new master, King Charles III. During this superstitious ritual, black boughs are tied on the hives. They must be informed of a change of owner or the bees will not produce honey. Leave the hive and may die. I know I ought to be serious about what the monarchy does and its rituals, but... <laughs> I'm sorry, little bees. The queen has died. Could you be nice and be kind to King Charles III as he is the successor if we need you to produce a lot of money? Next up, microchipping pets is a standard practice. However, many parents are not making it more effective. Fur correspondent Julie and retriever reporter Sally join us with the fur raising details. Julie and Sally? Unfortunately, this is true. So Sally and I fetched some possum tips on microchipping. We talked and barked with Lake Erie Lab Rescue Foster Team leader Abby, who advised us. She spoke about a common mistake. They don't register in their name. Or if they move, they don't take the time to update it. So if your dog happens or cat happens to get loose and we don't have an updated contact information for you, that's no good having a microchip. So that's super important is make sure, take the time. As soon as you get your new family friend, get online, get it registered. When you're moving to a new place, don't forget about them. Make sure that you keep it updated. According to the American Kennel Club, one in three pets become lost at some point during their lives. Sally and I knew we had to check her chip status. She was microchipped by a rescue, but now her parents' info needs to be on it and registered with a national recovery database. She was recently adopted. We found her number on her rescue records. This should be a 9, 10, or 15-digit ID. We checked her number on the microchip registry lookup on the American Animal Hospitals Association site. We saw she was registered. We were then provided with a link to the company of Sally's registry. We went to Finano's site and saw her rescue's contact information and her new parent's email as the current owner. From there, a human could message the owner directly if they found her. Sally and I feel a lot better. Back to you, McGann. Thank you, Julie and Sally. I completely agree. I mean, look, you want to make sure that your pet is retrievable if something happens. If it gets lost or, I don't know, it runs away. So, yes, please, please, please do remember to register your pets so that you can have proper information on your microchip. Now, buddy contributor Icepig joins us from Canada. The Arctic Hare has hopped on camera in Edmonton, Alberta, where he was adopted. He clocks he should have been microchipped. Icepig? 
Ice pick. How are you? First of all, as a bunny, I'm sure you understand that most people just assume that if you stay, you stay. If you don't, you don't. And if you're one of them bunnies that's outside like you are right there, um, I'm not sure microchipping is something that people are really keen to because you'll just hop away, ain't you? And I don't think that there's an assumption that as a bunny, you'll let yourself be caught the same way a cat or a dog would. That's just my assumption. I and mean, I think that's why that you're not really microchipped as much as the other cats, really. And I wonder if it's a species thing. Do you guys tolerate microchipping as well as dogs and cats? I'm not sure. Does it have to be done while you're under? Do you know about that ice pick? You don't know much about it. See, you're complaining about stuff. And yet you don't know much about the stuff that you're complaining about. Do you see where that's confusing, ice pick? Next up, our producers fetched a couple of viral videos that gave them a good laugh. User at Sappy the Pomsky posted their Pomsky pawing a bittersweet message to her father. The video was played over 21 million times with more than 5 million likes. Sappy, it's almost daddy's birthday. What do you say to daddy? Happy, happy birthday. Yes. Bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lot of them that speak love that button. You're not getting that button in the house. Viewers at Twisted Scorpio Art shared a video of a man feeding his friends cats. Never apologize to a gang of cats. They'll just gang up on you even more. You don't apologize to cats. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they'll just go right after you. This one was played over 1 million times with more than 2,000 comments, including at Victoria Stifler, who wrote, they saved a fortune by not needing a security dog. <laughs> I agree. And Johnny Timmons said, if you just listen to the sound, you'd think someone's stabbing him. Oh my, let me think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those were some pretty sharp sounds there. And at Teal825 commented, I never laughed so hard. I had a few cats like that. And that's a wrap for us this morning, afternoon or evening. Depending on where you are on the globe, I'm Megan Eplon. Be sure to sniff out the latest headlines you need to know from the Podemic Network, brought to you by The Motley Crew. And if you had feedback or story suggestions, please leave a comment and subscribe, share, like at The Motley Crew channel on YouTube for fur and other awesome entertainment. <laughs> oh, and that's just your husband's a lot older, isn't he? Who? Oh. Your husband? My, let's not talk about my private life, people. You don't talk. I can say he sucks. But we're not going to get into it. I feel like I need an a like a, a an understudy. What about Alexander? It's just highly inappropriate all around. I don't know the girl, so no. Why? Why would you recommend a comedian? I don't understand. I'm a serious journal. I don't. Why would you do that? Is that even a career? Isn't that a hobby? Well, Corker Spaniel Lissy. Oh. Corker Spaniel Lissy. They live with Star. Corker Spaniel Lissy. Why do I sound like that? At the Duke and Duchess of York's, who, by the way, still live together. I don't know why. No, I do know why. I mean, it's like this. If you can find a way to finagle yourself into some sort of royal dwelling and not have to pay rent or mortgage, then you do so. And that's exactly what Sarah Ferguson did. Oh, the brown eyes you got. Oh, yay. Oh, she's tired too. <laughs> I know. We're all tired. Sally. She's got to go back to bed. 
Oh, yeah, Sally wanted to say hi. She's going to finish writing the copy for the microchips. So she left. Now, Bonnie contributor Ice Pick joins us. Ice Pick. <laughs> Sounds like a mobster, Bonnie. 